When Elon Musk commented on China's Zhukui 3 rocket, he said something surprising. It could surpass Falcon 9 within five years. But recently, he revealed something else entirely. A fundamental problem with China's Starship copies that has no clear solution. SpaceX spent six years turning crude steel prototypes into the most powerful rocket ever built. They've flown 11 test flights, suffered multiple failures, and burned through billions. So when Chinese startups claim they'll match Starship by 2027, what critical challenge are they overlooking? Since 2020, something unusual started happening in China's space industry. Private companies began unveiling rockets that looked strangely familiar. Not inspired by SpaceX, actually resembling SpaceX vehicles down to specific design choices. The most obvious example was Landspace's Zhuke 3. When the first images appeared, aerospace engineers worldwide did a double take. Nine engines clustered at the base. Large grid fins mounted near the top. Vertical takeoff. Vertical landing profile. Stainless steel construction. Even the fuel choice, liquid methane and oxygen, matched what SpaceX selected for Starship, not Falcon 9. This wasn't convergent evolution where different teams reach similar solutions independently. This was deliberate replication of a proven formula. But here's what made industry insiders pause. JUK-3 actually worked. On its first orbital attempt, it successfully reached space and delivered its payload. That's genuinely impressive because reaching orbit on a debut flight is something even experienced teams often fail to achieve. Musk himself acknowledged this publicly, stating the rocket could potentially surpass Falcon 9 within five years. So, if copying works, what's the problem? The situation escalated recently when Beijing Lincoln Tianxing Technology unveiled Jingo-1, a rocket concept that doesn't just borrow from Starship, it practically mirrors it. Fully reusable two-stage vehicle, stainless steel body, grid fins and landing legs on the booster, vertical recovery for both stages. Some renders even show drone ship landings, a signature SpaceX approach. Then came the claim that stopped everyone. First test flight as early as 2027. That's less than three years from now for a vehicle attempting to match the most complex rocket ever built. SpaceX began serious Starship testing in 2019 and has since conducted 11 major flights, most ending in explosions. They've spent roughly six years and billions of dollars refining systems that still aren't fully operational. Even Chinese aerospace experts called this timeline overly optimistic. But why exactly? What makes copying Starship's appearance completely different from copying its performance? This is where the real issue emerges, and it's not what most people think. Copying the external design of Starship is relatively straightforward. It's a steel cylinder with engines and flaps. You can measure dimensions from photos, study materials from public presentations, and recreate the basic shape. Chinese manufacturing capabilities are world-class. Building a similar-looking structure isn't the challenge. The problem is what you can't see in photographs, what you can't measure from the outside, what took SpaceX thousands of test fires, explosions, and failures to figure out? Let's start with the Raptor engine. Each Starship booster uses 33 of them firing simultaneously. Raptor operates on a full-flow staged combustion cycle, which sounds technical but means this. It's the most efficient rocket engine architecture ever mass-produced, and it's brutally difficult to make reliable. Chamber pressures exceed 300 bar higher than any operational engine. Operating temperatures reach extremes that cause materials to behave unpredictably. During Starship's test flights, SpaceX lost multiple vehicles because just a few Raptor engines shut down unexpectedly. When you're running 33 engines and lose even three or four, the vehicle becomes unbalanced. Thrust vectors shift. Control systems struggle to compensate. 
In several cases, this led to complete loss of the vehicle within minutes. Can you reverse engineer reliability from watching explosions? Can you copy the metallurgy SpaceX developed through years of iteration? The valve timing. The ignition sequencing. Stage separation seems simple in concept. You detach the booster and light the upper stage. Starship uses hot staging, where the upper stage engines ignite while still attached to the booster. This technique is more efficient but creates immense structural and thermal stress at the separation point. SpaceX failed multiple attempts before getting it right. You can see hot staging happen in videos. What you can't see is the precise thrust profile needed, the structural reinforcement required, the split-second timing that prevents catastrophic failure. This knowledge comes from testing, failure analysis, and incremental improvement, not from studying someone else's success. Then there's re-entry, arguably the hardest challenge of all. Starship descends belly-first through the atmosphere, using four massive flaps for control while experiencing temperatures exceeding 1,400 degrees Celsius. The vehicle is covered in over 18,000 individual ceramic heat tiles. Early Starship re-entries failed when tiles fell off, cracked under thermal stress, or allowed heat to penetrate the steel structure underneath. Each failure taught SpaceX something specific about tile adhesion, thermal expansion, gap management, and structural flexing at extreme temperatures. They've redesigned the heat shield multiple times based on actual flight data from vehicles that burned up or broke apart. How do you copy that experience? How do you shortcut the learning curve that comes from watching your vehicles disintegrate and analyzing what went wrong? Here's something most coverage misses. Starship's complexity isn't just in individual systems, but in how they integrate. SpaceX's Starbase facility in Texas produces these vehicles using advanced manufacturing techniques developed specifically for this program. They weld stainless steel sections using methods that maintain strength while minimizing weight. They install thousands of heat tiles with precision attachment systems. They integrate avionics, propulsion, and power systems that must work flawlessly across extreme conditions. Jingo 1 renders show a vehicle roughly half Starship's size, maybe 50 to 60 meters tall versus Starship's 120 meters. That's actually revealing. Scaling down doesn't make the engineering easier. It just reduces some variables. You still need engine reliability, flight control precision, thermal protection effectiveness, and systems integration. All the fundamental challenges remain. Some images show landing legs on the booster, others don't. This inconsistency suggests the design is still conceptual, still being refined on paper rather than tested in hardware. SpaceX went through dozens of Starship prototypes, literally blowing them up during pressure tests, engine fires, and landing attempts before attempting orbital flight. Can you compress that development timeline from six years to two? Not without skipping critical testing phases, and skipping those phases means flying vehicles with untested systems, a recipe for exactly the catastrophic failures SpaceX experienced. Musk's real message about China's Starship copies isn't about intellectual property or competition. It's about the fundamental nature of aerospace development. Some things can't be shortcut. You can't copy your way past the physics. You can't steal the institutional knowledge that comes from failure. Juki 3's success with a Falcon 9-style design proves China has serious engineering talent and manufacturing capability. Reaching orbit on a first attempt demonstrates strong systems integration and quality control. But Falcon 9 took SpaceX years to make reusable, and even now each landing requires precise conditions and extensive refurbishment. Starship represents a leap beyond Falcon 9's complexity, by an order of magnitude. It's not just bigger, it's attempting things no rocket has ever done. Full reusability of both stages, on-orbit refueling, rapid turnaround between flights, 
heat shield durability across multiple missions. These aren't features you add to a design. They're capabilities you develop through systematic testing and inevitable failures. The timeline problem isn't just ambitious, it reveals a possible misunderstanding of what's required. If Chinese teams believe they can match Starship by 2027 without experiencing similar failures, they're either planning to skip essential development steps or underestimating the engineering challenges involved. Neither approach ends well when you're dealing with rockets carrying tons of explosive propellant. SpaceX's current position didn't come from clever designs alone. It came from a willingness to fail publicly, repeatedly, and expensively. Every starship explosion taught them something they couldn't learn any other way. Every recovered booster revealed stress points they hadn't predicted. Every successful landing validated approaches they'd refined through previous failures. China's space industry operates differently. Less public testing, fewer visible failures, more controlled development. This approach works well for incremental advances, but becomes problematic when attempting revolutionary leaps. Starship-class vehicles don't forgive hidden weaknesses. They expose every engineering shortfall in the most dramatic way possible. So when we see Jingo-1 renders that look like Starship, the question isn't whether China can build something similar in appearance. The question is whether they're prepared for the extensive, expensive, failure-filled development process required to make it actually work. And that's the problem Musk identified, the one with no shortcut, no easy solution, and no way to copy your way past it. So here's what we're actually witnessing. China has proven they can build impressive rockets. Zhuge 3's successful first flight demonstrated real capability. But copying Starship's design is fundamentally different from mastering Starship's engineering. SpaceX didn't choose to explode 11 test vehicles because they enjoyed it. Each failure revealed problems that couldn't be discovered through simulations or borrowed designs. The precise moment when heat tiles fail. The exact thrust imbalance that destabilizes 33 engines. The structural stress points during hot staging that only appear under actual flight conditions. This knowledge exists nowhere except in the teams who lived through those failures, analyzed the wreckage, and implemented solutions. You can't photograph it. You can't reverse engineer it. You can't steal it through espionage because it's not written down. It's embedded in thousands of design decisions made after watching what doesn't work. When Musk said there's no solution to China's starship problem, he wasn't being dismissive. He was stating an uncomfortable fact. Revolutionary aerospace development requires revolutionary failures. The question isn't whether Chinese teams have the talent or resources. It's whether they're prepared to accept the same expensive, public, explosive learning curve that SpaceX endured. Because if they try to skip it, they won't end up with a Starship copy. They'll end up with something that looks like Starship, but doesn't perform like one. And in aerospace engineering, that difference is everything. What do you think? Can China compress six years of failures into two? Share your thoughts below. And if you found this analysis valuable, hit that like button and subscribe to New Space Review for more deep dives into what's really happening in the space industry. Thanks for watching.